Hi, this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'll be taking a look at Waringal Daddy Long Legs. Can you see that shimmer? I'll be doing a writing sample on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper using a variety of pens and nib sizes, ranging from a Pilot Extra Fine to a 1.5 stub nib, and in between, I'll be using a variety of Lamy nibs. I'll take a look at some writing samples that I did on other types of paper. I'll compare Daddy Long Legs to other pale pink inks from my collection. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of my water resistance test and the chromatography. Wearing gold Daddy Long Legs appears to have come off the nib of my dip pen uniformly, but it's hard to describe. It didn't feel like it was writing uniformly while I was writing. The swatch that I made with tweezers is nice and crisp, but you can see it gets really light in the lighter parts. The drip at the end of the swatch has a darker halo of ink, and you can see there's quite a bit of shimmer in there. I'm going to begin writing with a Pilot Kakuno. It has an extra fine stainless steel nib that has been dipped in the ink. This ink really plays tricks on your mind when you're writing with an extra fine nib like this because it felt fairly smooth. It didn't feel dry, but it's so pale that my mind's thinking there's not enough ink coming out. But it felt nice, so I have to make a note here of nice to remind me that it felt okay in this nib, but my eyes can tell me this is not my favorite nib size for this type of ink. Next, I'll be writing with the Lamy logo. It has an extra fine 14 karat gold nib. Now this pen has a converter full of daddy long legs and for the writing samples with the Lamy nibs, I will just be swapping out the nib. And I'll probably dip it in the ink to kind of prime the feed. Now, I don't know if you can see it. This is a decently wet pen and ink combination, like the smear, smear smears way out to here, but the ink smear, the X, almost completely disappears when I wipe it. This is a pretty pale ink, but this pen and, or this nib and ink combination feels pretty nice as long as you're writing fairly small like I am here. Next, I'll be writing with the same Lamy logo with the extra fine stainless steel nib. Now you can see there's quite a bit of difference between the steel extra fine and the gold extra fine. That gold extra fine is noticeably softer. There's quite a bit of bounce to that nib and the steel extra fine feels like a nail and you get a much finer line. It was uniform. You know, obviously it just didn't feel as good as the gold extra fine, but if you're wanting a finer line, the steel nib is the way to go. But for a pale ink like this, probably not so much. Next, I've got the Lamy logo again, this time with the stainless steel medium nib. I 
I don't think I mentioned it with the steel extra fine, but since there is less ink being put down, I know you probably can't see it on the screen, but there is less ink being put down in these steel nibs, and they both just feel dry. You know, they obviously are drier than the gold nib, but looking at the ink smear, I wouldn't call it dry, but it just, it feels dry. Well, and you see there, I had a little, a little burst of ink. That looks a bit better, but for me, it's just, I would say it's kind of a trick of the mind. It's so pale that it's making you think it's dry, and it, you get the, the sensation that it's dry, even though maybe it really isn't. You'll see on another writing sample that I did, I'll show here in a minute, that on a paper that's not quite so smooth as this Tomoe River paper, it is a bit more pleasant to write with. Next, I've got the Lamy logo, and this is the medium nib. The previous nib that I wrote with was a fine nib. Okay, you can see in this medium nib, it's looking more like the 14 karat extra fine as far as how dark the line is that it's putting down. This was more pleasant. I would, I would say that this was a pleasant writing experience. It was smooth. It didn't feel dry like the extra fine and the fine steel nibs did. Um, I'll go ahead and put that this was very smooth. Depending on the paper you're writing on, maybe almost too smooth. This is more like glassy smooth, but uh, yeah, this was nicer. Next, I'll be writing with a Lamy stainless steel broad nib. The appearance is very similar to the medium nib, but this was even more glassy smooth and I would say a bit too smooth for my taste. The medium, I, I think I liked it better just because I didn't feel like I was slipping and sliding on the paper quite so much. This, this was very smooth. If, if that's the kind of writing experience you like. Next, I'll be writing with a Lamy stainless steel 1.1 stub nib. The horizontal lines were, because they're so thin and this ink is so pale, they are quite light. And in this stub nib, I noticed in the other writing samples, I felt like I was needing to press harder to get the proper amount of ink. But then when I would consciously tell myself, okay, just write normal, it, it looked the same. I think just the lightness of this ink, how pale it is, makes me feel like I'm wanting to get more ink out. Now, I didn't have that sensation with the ones that, the others that look darker, like the gold extra fine and the medium and the broad. But that's the same kind of sensation I had when I was writing with the extra fine and the fine. It's so pale that you feel like you want to press harder to get more ink out. And then that makes it, uh, you know, press into the paper. You get more feedback and it feel, and it makes it feel more dry. Um, this 1.1 looks good, like the medium and the broad and the gold, but it felt more like these two finer nibs felt more dry. Now, I've just been swapping nibs in between these writing samples, and I'll go ahead and show you what I've done 
to the feed, I had a suggestion from Marilyn Darling that if you're going to be using a shimmer ink in a Lamy, you can take out the middle part of the feed. And you can see you still have the two little narrow ink channels, but you get more ink. It doesn't have to travel as far down narrow ink channels. So you don't have as much space or as much time for the ink channel to get clogged up with shimmer. I, I think it's worked. I haven't experienced problems with ink starvation from what seems like a shimmer clog. I don't know. This seems like it's working pretty well. I'm going to put my gold nib back on here because that has been my favorite to write with. And while I have my pen out here, there's something I want to show you that I've noticed about this ink. The ink, well, I'll show you I'll show you this shimmer. The shimmer, this shimmer seems to reincorporate pretty easily just with a twist of the pen. Some shimmers, you really have to kind of work with it, but this shimmer does settle out really quickly. And this ink will tend to get stuck in the back of the converter. So you see, you have to give it a little tap to get it to run down and come into contact with the feed. And finally, I'm going to do a writing sample with my Pen BBS cartridge converter pen. I'm just going to dip the 1.5 stub nib in the ink for this writing sample. Okay, this writing experience was pretty nice. I've had some trouble with this stub nib and the more narrow Lamy stub nib, having trouble wanting to grab the paper consistently, but that's one thing I've noticed about Tomoe River. Even though it's a smooth coated paper, it usually does a pretty good job of grabbing the ink on the nib, and um, this was this was pretty pleasant right here. Okay, while that dries, I'll take a look at some of the other writing samples. On rhodia paper, it's kind of surprising here. I look at this and it looks good, like the most of the writing samples just at first glance look really nice, but they just, at the time, felt dry, felt like I wasn't getting enough ink to on the page. I can kind of see here with the dip nib writing sample, you can see like the D is kind of dry, the capital D, but the lowercase d looks like it put more ink down. But then on the next lowercase d, the the vertical stroke was kind of dry. So it was a little inconsistent. And here, like the long look looks wet and then the legs looks dry. So it was a little bit inconsistent when you look at it more closely. And just again, these all felt kind of dry on the page. I've got an old Martha Stewart notebook. This is made by Avery. I don't know if they have a consistent type of paper that they always use. But this is kind of an absorbent paper. It is not a good fountain pen friendly paper, but... Writing on this felt pleasant. I just did a writing sample with the gold nib. The ink spread a little bit, but it's not a, a blobby kind of spread. It's consistent, so it looks nice, and it felt pleasant as I was writing on the page. And with this being a lighter ink, when it bleeds through, it's not super obvious. I probably wouldn't want to write on both sides, but it wouldn't look bad like it does with a darker ink. On my copy paper, though, the ink also spread, but it looks blobby, like some letters spread more than others, and 
like the rhodia paper, everything just felt kind of dry, but looked kind of wet and messy. Let me do a, a quick writing sample here with the Pilot Extra Fine and see what that feels like. Now that felt okay. Didn't feel didn't feel dry. Overall, that wasn't bad. And on this absorbent paper, with it pulling more of the ink out, has an okay amount of legibility. Hmm, that's interesting. The writing sample that I did in my Leutsch term with the 1.5 stub nib looks so pretty. The color of the ink, that powder pink, but it was very unpleasant. This is what I was mentioning earlier. The the stub nib just didn't want to grab the paper. You can see on the W, I had to kind of press down to get it to grab. Some of the letters look really nice, but like the D, the, the ink just didn't want to grab the paper. And here you can see the X that I made, the little smear, just the ink just disappears. On my ink collection cards, you can kind of see that same phenomenon that we had with the Tomoe River paper. The extra fine and fine look like a different ink. They just, they're so much lighter. And this one, you can see the 1.1 stub nib. It actually looks lighter. Like I mentioned, it had the same kind of feel that the steel extra fine and fine nibs had. The gold extra fine and the medium and the broad were a bit wetter and a bit more legible. But this ink is so pretty. Look at that swatch. Now, again, in the tweezer swatch, you can see how light this the base of the ink gets when it's laid down in a drier application. This is an ink that it wasn't fun to write with with the dip nib. You can see in the little scribbles, they are pretty wispy and dry. But the first ink that I thought of when I started writing with this one was Robert Auster Rose Gold Antiqua. And you can see that it's quite a bit more saturated and a bit more, this where this is a powdery kind of pink, this is more of a, a berry color. I don't know. They're slightly different base colors of ink different amounts of saturation, but they're both shimmer inks. Let's see. There's the shimmer of the Rose Gold Antiqua. So they're both kind of that, not, I wouldn't call it pearlescent shimmer. They're more of the, the chunky types of shimmer that s tend to settle out a bit quicker. Sailor Shikiori Yozakura is another kind of low saturation type of ink, but you can see it's a bit more purple when you look at it up next to Daddy Long Legs. Sailor Ink Studio number 252 is maybe has a, a bit more purple, a bit more gray, is a bit more murky, but again is one of those really pale, low saturation pink inks. And an ink that I've heard people talk about a lot, Ferris Wheel Press, Lady Rose. Ferris Wheel Press is kind of uh, famous, infamous for their pale inks. Lady Rose is one of those, and it almost looks like Daddy Long Legs does get a bit, yeah, maybe a bit darker, but Lady Rose is a different shade of pink. It's got more coral in it. Maybe is a bit more salmon colored. Just a different shade of pink. And I can see down here that I had that same trouble with the stub nib getting it to grab the paper. Okay, I did a writing sample on a little piece of rhodia paper and I let it dry overnight 
Then I submerged it in water for 10 minutes, and you can see that the only thing that was left behind is the shimmer. The chromatography had given me a little bit of hope that there would be a, a lavender gray bit of ink left behind on the water resistance test, but no, everything washed away. Let me see. You can see a little line of shimmer that stayed down there at the bottom. But in the water resistance test, even this line of grayish lavender washed away. Okay, I always get excited about these pale pink inks. I, I really want to like them, but for me, the nib sizes that I use, I like these finer nibs, and so it's just not as practical. However, the Lamy Gold Extra Fine, I can see myself using this for a little bit of light journaling, like in my some lines a day where you're just writing a small amount, and I can see it being enjoyable to use for something like that. My main problem with the larger nibs, even though it looks nice, um, for me, I'm not crazy about super glassy smooth nibs, and these just felt a little too smooth for my taste. And then on the stub nibs, I just had trouble getting the ink to grab the paper in some cases. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.